How do you do, fellow humans? And now for something completely different. As promised, today we're going to do a Mantis abduction art piece. This is a housewarming gift for my oldest niece, Madeline, who has uh, excellently weird taste in art. So when I was thinking about getting a housewarming gift for her, I headed over to Etsy, where all the good things live, and uh, did a search for taxidermied insects. And I was just planning on buying her like a, a mount of some kind of exotic insect. And then I saw some people had taken mantises, like this guy that I'm very gently trying to uh, remove from the packaging. You can see his little arm already tore off and uh, later on one of his wings bites it. But uh, that's a different story entirely. But I had seen other artists put mantises in little dioramas, little shadow box dioramas, as if they were being abducted by a UFO. So I thought, that's cool. I can, uh, I can make one of those. And what's even better is that uh, Madeline's decor is somewhat Southwestern American themed. And a lot of the um, art projects I was seeing were actually kind of more Northwoods, more Rocky Mountain kind of uh, vibe. So I thought, well, I'll just make one with a little uh, Southwest Mesa vibe. And so that's what I did. So I ordered this Mantis off of Etsy. And yeah, it was like 10 bucks or something, not, not too shabby and that shadow box off of Amazon, but I painted it a uh, tur little turquoise blue to match with the uh, Southwestern theme and set that aside for a second. Then I took some watercolor paper, painted that all yellow, set that aside to dry, aside to, to dry, the, to, to, to dry. <laughs> while this is live folks, while I uh, drew that UFO. So now that the yellow is dry again, I'm painting this Southwestern kind of sunset nighttime scene. And I have to tell you, I am patting myself on the back for how this came out. It came out pretty much exactly as I was envisioning it. I wanted the nice uh, kind of flat of that gouache. I'd never used fancy gouache paints before. And so this was a good opportunity to crack these buddies open and use them. And it just, I'm so happy with how it came out. So uh, it dries nice and um, uh, nice and matte. So now we're back to the UFO. Since that had dried a little bit, I added on some red colors and now I'm just kind of to the outline in um, black India ink. I always use Peach Martin's, Dr. Peach Martin's India ink for all your inking needs. And um, that's just on a poster board that I had kicking around. So, so I taped that down, uh, painted the UFO on it just to see how that little mantis is doing. And now I'm cutting this guy out and we're going to use those two strips of scrap to make some saguaro cactuses. So I use the cut off there and just quickly hand drew a little cactus, tape that down so the paper doesn't curl with the uh, wetness of the paint. And again, using that uh, fancy gouache paint, just kick out a quick little uh, cactus and a little uh, uh, cow skull. One of the main features of Madeline's living room is this gigantic steer skull. So I figured that would kind of uh, tie in as well. I really enjoy making gifts for people. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with this whole project. In fact, I have to tell you that this is probably the my favorite thing that I painted in 2023, if not uh, longer than that. I, I did it right at the end of uh, 2023, and it's just uh, fantastic. So I'm gonna set these little cactuses aside to dry, and uh, we're going back to the painting. And I thought that nice night sky needed a little uh, star shine, so I've got a toothbrush there, that door, that's not my toothbrush, that's my wife's toothbrush. And I'm just gonna um, sprinkle some stars into the sky. If you ever wondered how the stars get into the sky, it's just um, a giant toothbrush. Just the biggest toothbrush you've ever seen. Sprinkling, sprinkling some PH Martin's white India ink up into the sky. I, I wanted a little bit more, so I loaded the palette back up and got some bigger, uh, some bigger blobs up there. So there, a nice close up. Fast way in a couple seconds to make a nice starry night over the southwest. Now here's one of the most satisfying uh, things that you'll ever encounter. Oh wait, hold on. First we, first we have to size up how this mantis is going to go. I just super glued him on there and his arm. Uh, and yeah, so here's, here's the satisfying part. Many artists will tell you that when you tape something down and then you get to peel off the tape, uh, it's so great. It's just such a satisfying kind of ASMR thing going on. And a trick to it is you don't just pull straight up. You have to pull kind of at an angle so that you don't um, get a bunch of paper sticking to the bottom of the uh, 
of the tape. It makes a nice cleaner pull. Down in the lower right corner, you can see the paper tore just a little bit under where I was, but that's fine. This is all gonna be trimmed off here a second anyway. Ah, oh, this is nice. You know, this is, I, I enjoy Dairy Queen blizzards, but after you've had the delicious treat of all the mixings and fillings or whatever, you get down to the bottom and there's that little unadulterated half inch of just white vanilla, uh, you know, content <laughs> that the mixer didn't hit. It's like a nice little palate cleanser. That's how this feels to me. Like this, this nice white crisp uh, borders around this uh, cool paint. But like I said, we're just gonna chop those suckers off right now. The interior of the shadow box that I bought is seven inches by nine inches. And this uh, watercolor paper is eight by 10. So I just need to go around and remove a half inch by today's map from uh, each side. So that's what I'm doing here. You always want to put another piece of paper down to pad it if you're as you're cutting through so that the blade just goes entirely through the piece of paper that you're working with and uh, it keeps it from tearing and gives a little cushion keeps you hopefully from messing up your tabletop although you can see that my art table has seen some shit man it has seen some shit and we're just going around to each of the corners and trimming these down to seven by nine crossing our fingers that they will fit into the um, the shadow box. It's a pity to have to cut off some of those nice stars that I just made, but you know, life is suffering. Art is life. Therefore, for the transitive property, art is suffering or something like that. Now, of course, the cuts didn't uh, go through the first time, a couple of them, so I just have to hit them again. NBD, as they say. I think that that paint just kind of makes it a little bit thicker. That could be an old blade too. Probably both. Crack that guy out of there. One more cut for good measure and we'll get on to uh, something a little bit more interesting. Fresh and clean as a whistle. Nice smooth cut there. All right, we bring that shadow box back in. And we just use the moment of truth. Is it gonna fit inside there? Dun, 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 dun. Perfect. All right, so you keep that little bad boy out of there. And then here's the only part that I regret about the entire project is that I used this cheap ass glue. I mean, not even Elmer, it's just, you know, Dollar Tree glue on that kind of fabric pushpin background. I thought, yeah, that'll stick. That'll, that'll be fine. It's, you know, it's just paper getting stuck to uh, fabric. Uh, what, what's the worst thing that happened? So I used this styrofoam brick that was part of the shipping, the packaging when I bought this uh, shadow box. It had that styrofoam in there to keep the glass from breaking. So I thought, well, I can just use that to um, hold down the corners while this uh, glue dries. And so I did that and I broke it up into fourths to fit into the corners and latched that up and set it aside for a little while because there's always other things to work on. So after that dried, you can see like in the night sky, the wetness of the ink or of the uh, glue came through and it really really disappointed me because i was so uh, attached to that painting but what can you do i didn't get any footage of after it had dried for a very long time so maybe it's better madeline if you're watching this let me know or i'll, I'll ask you next time but i put uh, some little pieces of foam rubber on the back of these cutouts and hot glued them onto the uh, paper and then hot glued them down to the board and same with these little uh, cactus guys. You can see that foam over there. And the only, hot, the only hot glue sticks I had were gold glitter holiday ones. But you know, waste not, waste not, want not. Nobody's gonna see it anyway. So I'm, I'm doing these all with gold glitter. All that glitters isn't gold. And you can see that poor little uh, mantis has a jacked up wing there on his, on his left side or his left or right side. Uh, later on, I went in with a little dash of ink and just kind of filled that out so it didn't appear to be broken but um i'm disappointed it was a hole when i got it and somewhere between either taking it out of the packaging or gluing it to that um to that beam of light to that tractor beam 
the wind got injured also. So it was it was cool. It was a the bug was in good shape when it arrived, but it was stapled to a board under some cellophane and uh, hard to get out. But it was the final project. Uh, gave it to her at Christmas time, but it was for housewarming, and uh, she loved it. I just want you to know we're all counting on you. I just want you to know we're all counting on you. Take me home, country road. Just remember, the truth is out there. How do you... How do you do, fellow humans? And now for something completely different.